Hey guys, long time no see, eh? I'm Mac, I do the recap for Roll for Charisma, and this week it's been a bloody one. <laughs> Dreams of Silver and Stone is in some hot water as of late. Having recently returned from the Kozlov Nest, the team has been hurrying back in order to handle an oncoming Empire invasion that Kaizen has foreseen. Thankfully, when they make it back to the town, nothing's happened yet, but... Further investigating into this, Kaizen finds that it's going to be in a few days. The team gets to work, as they normally do, trying to get everyone out, hoping that at the very least when the Empire invades, that the town's clear of civilians, everything goes smoothly. They meet up with Melody at the tavern, who's strangely covered in dust for some reason. With a little bit of deductive reasoning, Patchy figures out that she's not digging out a basement. She's digging a tunnel. That's when the shotgun comes out. Former Associates, Patchy, I'm looking for him, apparently he's trying to cure the Halophage, something that's earned people stuck foot halflings, Skixie. He's working to reverse that, make them not skips in anymore. Just when everything starts to calm down, assassins start bursting through the wall. Plays outside handling a crossbow and gillied one. And inside, firefights breaking out. Melody gets shot. And it only gets worse from there. I say heavy fighting ensues, it doesn't even begin to cover the shit that these people are dealing with to see. The tunnel's occupied. Local insurgents, what they're trying to do, they're trying to kidnap the town, set up an ambush, just add to the blood lighting. First the bugs, now this, that's the starship troopers. Nova, in a desperate bid to protect her team, pushes them out of the way, taking the blast from a suicide bomber. Apache just narrowly, just narrowly, narrowly, narrowly saves Felicia from a grenade. How the hell is that cat even still alive at this point? Moving quickly, they managed to destroy the tunnel underneath with a few well placed grenades, but not before Melody gets shot again. The group leaves the burning tavern. They're running out of time. Things aren't much better for the sparrows. A brief stint where the team is looking for power source to something. Apparently it can give Zep these ghostly patron power charge. So they're in their search for that. He and Collins, uh, the ship's deckhand, separated from the group. There's also zombies, folks. 
the unkillable kind, where take a few shots, they still don't die. Shoot them in the head, they still don't die. These things cannot die to bullets. Much to Amos's chagrin. Who's starting to unravel by the minute as their team, their families, literally separated from them. Red Iron's not doing much better. They get hijacked by Sylvia again, forcing them to integrate with the ship systems. We're none too pleased about it. Red Iron offers a plea deal, but... Well, it's guns, 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 as... Once they start searching through the, the base, just stuff starts coming out of the woodwork. Old zombies. Gotta love them. Between the fighting, they find out that our favorite bastard, Carver, and Keta, currently been in correspondence at that base. They're trying to make some sort of inoculation, some sort of sleep study. We don't know. Just as the fighting picks up, he and Collins manage to find what they're looking for, and it puts a hole in Collins' guts. Yeah. Screams can be heard throughout the base as everyone's favorite lesbian dad, Amos, moves to secure the situation. Red Iron's got them pretty heavily outfitted, but it's not enough to turn Velociraptor Dad into the Terminator. Quite the opposite. Amos loses an arm, stripped of most of his armor, save for a shoulder plate. They get there, kill the jerk, they move out. But they still gotta get back to the boat, folks. I'm Mac. This has been the recap for this week's Roll for Charisma. Roll for Chaos. Take it easy, folks. See you soon. to this week's episode of Roll Charisma. Thank you, Jackal, for your marvelous recap. I still don't trust you, but uh, it was a good recap. Uh, I'm Shannon. <laughs> I'm Steven. And uh, we will be your hosts this evening as we hang out uh, with uh, Jack and Scott and first Jack from, well, it's Locust Games. We'll talk about a couple of other things. And... Uh, it should be extremely fun because um, he's from the UK, so very cool accent. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's always a plus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everyone, without any more ado, welcome to the show, Jack. Woo! Hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had this whole thing. I was going to introduce, like, the whole spiel of the things, and then it went... <laughs> right out of my head. So I was like, he's got an accent. I'm going to talk about the most generic thing about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, have you ever uh, checked out the show? Do you know what you're in for yet? No idea. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I don't know. Oh no, oh, never what, apologize. What, that's that's what, even what, more fun. What, no, uh, no, yeah, it's your no, favorite show. Of this sort <laughs> of stuff. So yeah, cool. Uh, Absolutely. So what we're gonna do uh, is uh, we will roll, well, you will be rolling a d20, which you've prepared. 
Um, and we are going to have you roll, and what number you pick, we will roll, read from our icebreaker questions, which have very little to do with games, probably nothing to do with, like, what you're interested in, but the fans, the fans want to know about the inside, you know, like, you know, panda preferences and, and various fluff things. That's people I do wanna... have some pretty strong opinions about pandas, so. As you should. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we're gonna do a few questions on that. Twenty, which is a problem, because I don't, oh no, I, I do have a few twenty somewhere. It sounds like you ought to. <laughs> There's a couple in there. I'm hearing. But it's not in that bag, because that's my wad bag, which is filled with D12s. Because of course you use oh. them to play wad. Uh, ah, that's you mean. don't. You don't. Um, I have lots of D12s for stupid reasons. Um, they're unrelated. <laughs> You're gonna have to roll for me. I don't know where a D20 is. That's absolutely cool. Steven, <laughs> Steven's prepared. Don't worry about it. I just oh, liked wait, all wait, of wait, the, wait, the, the it, sound. It, yes. I'm gonna laugh if you roll the same thing I rolled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 12. Yeah, that was 14. <laughs> Go ahead, Steven. Why don't you kick it off? 12. If you could have the power of teleportation right now, where would you go and why? Uh, uh, but I'm quite happy where I am right now. Um, That's a nice I, place I, to be. I, I, I like here. It's got my Switch and my PC and um, things. I probably, I probably go to my parents' farm for a minute, um, if only so that I can see their cats and. Um, they're alpacas, although it is like 1.30 in the morning, so the alpacas will all be asleep and like hidden somewhere. Um, Your parents have an alpaca farm? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, most most people's midlife crisis is like, buy a shiny car. My dad bought a field and filled it with alpacas. I love oh, it. Get your ticket, we're going over the pond. <laughs> That's worth visiting. <laughs> like, I have to get the alpaca farm. <laughs> I think. Like, Did they do anything with them? Like, like. They collect the wool. They collect the wool and they, they do some stuff with it and sell it a little bit and they collect the droppings as well because apparently those are very valuable. Um, for fertilizer. Yeah. Apparently it's. Yeah. The alpaca droppings are excellent fertilizer for you. Creme de la creme of the alpaca poop. Alpaca poop. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, okay. That's wonderful. So this is the perfect thing. All of these icebreaker questions always lead into something like, oh, yeah, I would go to my parents' alpaca farm. Like, oh, that's a thing we did not know. Yep. Straight up. And I'm jealous. All right. Go ahead and roll another one, Steven. Since you got your die. Oh, he has one now. Oh, that's right. Oh, I have one. I have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew that. We already. 17. 17. 17. If you could have any real life animal for a pet, what would it be? Any. Otter, I reckon. <gasps> An otter or a ringtail lemur. I really like otters. Both adorable. You kind of need water, which makes them a bit of a nightmare to keep because I don't have a pond. Um, That's fair. I, can, I can make a lemur happy. Yeah, I mean, they're mostly arboreal, right? You just like let them climb on things and yeah, yeah. Like, hop around with their little furniture. Yeah, I would love that. But next time we do an interview with you, you have to have one, and then we're just gonna sing it, see it boinging, springing out behind you, just randomly. I'm, I'm not I'm entirely sure it would be legal. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Quite tricky to get. I mean, Bristol Zoo has a few. Like you can just do a, a zoo heist. Yeah. I mean, just a good old fashioned zoo heist. That would be the next time I'm on. Like, we'll do a, I'll do a midnight zoo heist, like in, in yeah. location. Like, yeah, like Ocean's Eleven style. You have to have like the whole plan and the like camera. I'm, I, I want to watch this, so make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> but now that we're talking about it, it's premeditated. Yeah. Darn it. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, well, go ahead and roll again. You can tell <laughs> I haven't played um, tabletop RPGs for a while because my, my dice rolling reflex is terrible. Um, so... and... <clears throat> if you could hang out with any cartoon or video game character, who would you choose and why? 
Oh, geez, that's such a hard question. That's horribly hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what we do yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. We interviewed ourselves a couple of weeks ago and realized how yeah, mean we actually like, are. I... But we haven't changed yeah, anything no. either, so. <laughs> I'm just thinking of what some of my top video games are. I'd probably go with the cast of Final Fantasy IX, just like the, the, the lot of them, because it's a great cast, and most of them are great. Um, and in particular, we a fantastic character, um, and I think that I'd mm -hmm. with some of them, maybe. Wait. What would you do? Uh, just go for a beer down the pub. Just go for a beer? Like, yeah. Go sort of like in in universe style and go watch a theater show like a thing you do like four times in the game yeah so have a beer theater show i dig it <laughs> sounds like a great night <laughs> yeah sounds fab all right let's have you roll one more time and then we're gonna go to the lightning oh, round two two the zombie apocalypse is coming. Who are three people, real or fictional, you would want on your team? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. so first off, real person, um, my DM, Kim, because she's terrifying. I wouldn't want to be in a fight with her. Um, yeah. She's really good company. And also, I trust her to be able to like, do the stuff that I can't do. So, like, I'm pretty good at tactics, but I'm made of sticks and hope, whereas she'd be able to, like, build a convincing barrier. Um, Fair. It's a good team, good duo. Like, yeah, I think we'd be pretty solid. Who would we pad it out with? Hmm. Um, like, you're asking fictional characters, and that's just, like, anyone ever which is not it's pretty much mm -hmm. anyone ah. and there's no wrong answers you can just you know spit it out there and change your mind later this this is not obligate <laughs> you know like obligatory when the zombie apocalypse happens it's like nope you only get the people that you answered in real quick no one else everyone else um i'd probably go with daruk from breath of the wild because he's made of rock and he's a bro and is a beast and i think he'd be really useful um and let's go with i'm just trying like i'm just drawing a blank on like everything i've ever played or read <laughs> or watched ever what is going on um the pressure all the pressure yeah. down on me <laughs> i'm not good on the pressure clearly um you're still charming, and that's what's important. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you wait until the end of the hour. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, oh let's, let's just go with um, go with Captain Britain, because he's awesome, but not, not the traditional Captain Britain. I want to go with the new Captain Britain, or the newest Captain Britain, Farah, who is... Um, I think her alternate name is Excalibur. She's not officially Captain Britain. She's from the comics. Um, she's a British Muslim woman who is the wielder of Excalibur in the Marvel Universe. Cool. Oh my god! That's so rad. She's so also, cool. I just looked up Captain Britain because I'm a terrible, terrible, apparently just like obsessed with my own country and had never heard of it. But that that's awesome. He got cancelled originally because he was more popular than Captain America. Oh, well, we don't oh. like that. <laughs> oh, heavens, no. That can't happen. <laughs> can be a break. Break. <laughs> He's excellent every time. I'm looking and I'm seeing Orlando Bloom might be the voice or play Captain Britain. I don't know if this is true. I'm here for it. <laughs> I hope I don't not. Know. Sure. You hope not? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe? Is he? He is British, isn't he? Yeah. That's something, I guess. I think so. Something. Is he British or? Yeah, he's got. I think he's British. Yeah, he's English. Yeah, he's British. Yeah. British. Yeah. yeah. Side note: no, I just no, watched no. Army of the Dead last night. Speaking of zombies. <laughs> oh. Fun ride if you haven't seen it. Does that have a land of bloom in it? No. No. Stay on top. No. I'm just kidding. Zombies. It's much more on topic than Orlando. <laughs> oh, it's totally true. <laughs> 
got Batista in it. He was in Marvel films. Yes, That's he was. True. See, he was all these connections, Drax. Shannon. <laughs> it's that one game and that I cannot remember the name of, where you go from like one person to another, connecting their like movie. Telephone? No. What is it, man? <laughs> lightning round. Anyway, yep, lightning round. Uh, so <laughs> the lightning round is theoretically where we will ask you five uh, questions in rapid fire. However, um, we, everybody always gets tangential on it. So you don't want anybody pressure in yourself. You know, like this is just we're hanging out and we're just gonna aggressively throw questions at you. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, go ahead and roll your die. And, um, well, actually, yeah. What, do you get a, even their odds? All right, let's start with the top. Okie dokie. Do you cover your eyes during the scary part of a movie? No. Yeah, that would be silly given that you are obviously a horror guy. I like my horror. Same. Um, invisibility or super strength? Ooh, super strength. Favorite Disney princess? Uh, ooh, um, Rapunzel. I just, I just really like Tangled. It's a good film. Mm -hmm. It's a great film. She's adorable too. Um, dawn or dusk? Dusk. Oh goodness! What children's movie could you watch over and over again? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, like literally any of Studio Ghibli's children's films. Yeah. For a start. Do you have a favorite? Um, Ghibli? So, yeah, probably Laputa, um, which is mostly because it, it, it Castle and Sky, I think it's often yeah. referred to. Um, it's, uh, it was like one of the, f I think it was the first anime film I ever saw, anime thing I ever saw as a kid. And it's responsible for a lot of things I very much like, like minecart, like minecarts and um, castles that fly and ancient robot tech stuff like all of that stuff is just all from that film and this has just lodged itself right in my brain centers of things that i really like recalibrated the wiring yeah although top nice. is also excellent yeah all right um oh that's yours steven oh wow right uh no it's you we're right. organized all right favorite junk food <laughs> Uh, favorite junk food? Ooh, ooh, um... Oh, it's gummy sweets. Yeah, but gummy, uh, gummy sweets is just the best. What so. is your favorite childhood TV show? Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. What point does childhood stop and start with? I have no idea. We're still kind of living in childhood, so just use your best Yeah, guess. yeah. Um... I mean, I didn't Maybe when you were smaller than anything. full grown. Sorry? Maybe when you were smaller than full grown. Physically. That's no, a window. Two, so, I mean, that pulls it back quite a long way because I stopped growing a long time ago. Um, I feel you there. <laughs> I just, I just can't remember anything I actually watched and still think is good. That's um, fair. So much of it was garbage. Well, um, you don't have to like it still. Was there something that you loved now that you're like now going, oh my god, why did I do that? I mean, honestly, the Pokemon anime was like yeah. the one that I would actually make time in my existence to go and definitely watch every time. Um, yeah, that I'll, I'll go with that because that's excellent. Uh, well, it was a massive part of my youth rather than being excellent. <laughs> yeah. It's a good choice. Catch them all. That's right. Um, favorite season? Autumn. Last Halloween costume. Speaking of autumn, uh, don't tend to do Halloween uh, costumes. Is Halloween a thing in the UK as much as it is yeah. here? It's nowhere near as much as it is there. Um, it's it's a thing. But mostly, it's just kind of like bled over from the US because we get a lot of your TV shows. Right. So like, I remember when I was a kid, I used to be like, yeah, let's go trick-or-treating Halloween. Yeah, my parents were always like, what the hell are you on about? Like, what is any you of cannot, this? Right, you cannot go begging from strangers, random candy, small child of mine. Like, yeah. that's... They found it very weird. I um, can imagine. Like, 
I get I'm just of the age where it kind of like wasn't really a cultural oddity by the time I was aware enough to be able to notice if it was or not. Um, mm -hmm. But I've never really done it much. Um, so yeah, disappointing. Well, it's, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's my favorite holiday, but um, <laughs> it is bizarre when you think of it like out of context. Um, well, do costume? What was like, you know, like a costume party or anything like that? Uh, we'll go with LARP. I LARP, so we'll Perfect. Go with, Perfect. Um, the late, the most recent LARP character I played was the alien I played, who's dead now, tragically. Um, Rest in peace all red because their thing like within the LARP system i was playing the alien species i was playing they are all one color so he was like Ooh. full red um so i was like face paint red red leather jacket that i happened to own red trousers red, like literally everything was red um, um and he he was fun and then he died because grenades are horrible no <laughs> Grenades tend to do that to a person or any creature, I suppose. Uh, cake or pie? Oh, um, mm. are we talking American pie, where you like, like consider it sweet pies primarily, or UK pie, where it's primarily savory pies? As a fan of the Great British Bake Off. Uh, I would say you can go with any kind of pie that you wish. We're not going to be culturally insensitive. <laughs> I am a massive fan of savory pies. I really like a good savory pie. Like I can imagine or they look delicious. You can't find savory pies here very often, except for like a like weird chicken pot pie. pie. <laughs> yeah. Chicken pot pie, yeah. But like, and then we get like mincemeat, but it's like always like a weird canned thing and it's like semi-sweet and the meat is in this strange, like unnatural shape. And I don't know why we make it that way. That's very weird. It is, because before I watched the Great British Bake Off, I thought that that's what that was. And I thought y'all were gross. Like, <laughs> why are they eating this? But then I've seen people make these delicious, like, you know, savory pork pie, like with, you know, sage oh. and fennel and it's, you know, roasted. I'm like, that looks that really so good. Fair. I really like, just, I'm, I'm so. just a massive fan of short crust pastry. I'm a fiend for short crust pastry. It's good stuff. I mean, can't blame you. What? I'd be yours next. What is your favorite breakfast cereal? Ah, uh, barely ever eat breakfast cereal or have breakfast because I'm really bad at existence. Um, but favorite breakfast cereal probably be Crunchy Nut Cornflakes or, or no, actually, um, we have. I don't know if you guys have this. We have uh, what we call like Country Crisp. It's like one of the brand names of it, but it's like like lumps of I don't know what they are like <laughs> cereal stuff like busters lumps yeah, of like cereal stuff. like granola and honey and stuff or no it's, like, it's not like granola they're just kind of like clusters of like hmm. wheaty cereal thing and then you have like bits of fruit in them and things they're really nice yeah. and it Quite What's it called? I have no idea what they even are. That's concerning. <laughs> the mystery. I, I like random chunks of cereal lumps. Yeah, random, random chunks life. of cereal lumps. I've been eating those for years. I don't know what they are. <laughs> We're gonna have to find out. Um, do you prefer to play tank, DPS, or heals? That's any game. Ooh, um, it really does depend on the game. Um, I like, I very often like the idea of being support. Um, I enjoy doing like the sort of helping out support stuff, but I very often end up being um, DPS because in most games where you have a party structure, I am aggressive as hell. <laughs> you cannot stop me. Um, <laughs> When I used to play League of Legends before I realized how terrible that game is and I hate it so much. <laughs> I'm really not a fan. Um, but I played it for like four years. Uh, I was I was the one who would jump first and about 70% of the time I'd be fine. Um, but we it's also a good average. Like, 
we we played like three players, but then uh, we we moved to Smite for a while, and in Smite, I was definitely hyper aggressive nutter. You need that on a team, though. Right. Uh, do you believe in fate? Yeah. Yeah, and I. I don't think it's absolute, but I do believe in fate. And I think that, generally speaking, fate does like me. Maybe luck less so. <laughs> the stuff that really matters seems to work out. The stuff that doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, actually, that seems like a good uh, a good deal, you know. Yeah, I mean, balance is probably the way to take it. <laughs> ah, balance is overrated. <laughs> Um, what song on the radio do you sing with every time it comes on? Th this assumes that I listen to the radio. Um, you know, the word radio, I think, is is a little antiquated, maybe? Uh, like, say you're shopping in the market, and there's, like, music on the overhead, and then you start, like, like singing. What song are you singing? Because, like, you just can't help yourself. It's difficult um, because I very rarely <laughs> listen. Like, I, however, I do have a bunch of songs that I will sort of like at least sing under my breath. You, you have to understand I'm British, so we don't do things like openly. Um, right. Uh, and I, I'm quite Britishly British, so I'm fairly sort of like mired in all of our awful problems. Um, <laughs> like, like being. We have our own. Uh, completely repressed um but uh yeah like i mean most of the stuff i've been listening to in the last sort of few months that's really sort of got into my head has been in languages i don't speak so it's kind of difficult to actually sing along with that's fair I like it. or to know if you're actually singing it correctly yeah <laughs> sing it what it sounds like well that's fun so um, the question of the century have you ever worn socks with sandals? Yes, like once. It Just was once. a mistake. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so this is another cultural question. Are socks with sandals, they appear to be just as egregious in the UK as they are here? Yes, but possibly in more expected. Mm. Like, like mm. they're still in a front but you kind of expect that there is a certain portion of our population that will do it anyway. Uh, that's fair. And actually, that's kind of similar to here. So maybe we have that's a... That's true. Like, common ground. Birkenstock wearers wear socks with them more so than other sandals, I've noticed. Because there's no thong beneath it, between the toe. I suppose. In Birks, Birkenstock shoes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if Voldemort <laughs> offered you a hug, would you accept it? No. <laughs> no, I'm not a wizard Nazi. No, <laughs> I'm a wizard Nazi. Fair. Is a double dipping at a party ever acceptable? Do you know the term? No, I, I okay. heard it. So if you're no, eating, no, I don't know what it means. <laughs> crackers or whatnot you dip it in the dip and then you take a bite and then you take the bitten cracker and dip it again yeah that's not cool <laughs> <laughs> see more common ground yeah <laughs> no. oh, especially like covid you know like yeah. it's been a worldwide pandemic yeah. Like, nah. no double dip in period. <laughs> if, you <laughs> candles think, are if you still think it's fine after 2020, then no, you're even more wrong than you were before that. <laughs> you're so wrong. <laughs> uh, how long do you think you'd survive in a zombie apocalypse? Um, you... Not forever, but longer than most. Long, longer really than cool. average. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I think longer than average, but I probably wouldn't make it out. Um, a, assuming it got to the point where it's actually a zombie apocalypse, which seems far more likely than I thought it was a year ago. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I know. I, I thought maybe more of the population, uh, you know, like, well, you know, like that wouldn't really happen. People would, you know, do stuff, and now they're like, oh. <laughs> so. Do you think that if it was a zombie virus spreading across the world, people would be more inclined to get the vaccine or just as resistant? <laughs> They'd be like, it's causing it! <laughs> just curious. I think there would be probably a very small slice. A very small slice of people who are resistant to getting the vaccine. Who are resistant long. to getting the vaccine for dumb reasons. Yeah. Those people might be swayed if there were things eating other people. See, that's like, I maybe hope, that I would be hope. the line. Hopefully, <laughs> that would be the line. I think that, I think that a large portion of the people that have a problem with vaccines have a problem with vaccines and find reasons to justify that problem. Yes. Rather than the other way around. And honestly, things eating them won't change that. I... <laughs> I, That's about as much faith as I have, too. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Which probably I don't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so, what do your favorite pajamas look like? Uh, I don't wear pajamas. Oh. Uh, Nobody does. I just have it's... boxers. Like, I, I don't, I don't yeah. have pajamas. Um, but I'm also half Scottish, so I get very warm very quickly and easily. I don't like it. All right, well, we'll finish up. So, um, would you, here's the burning question, would you rather cuddle a baby panda or a baby penguin? I think mm. a baby panda would be more pleasant to cuddle, but I'd go for the penguin, despite getting pecked, because I'm like, <laughs> they're hilarious. Yeah, well, I know it's a baby penguin, so it would still be like, Kind of fluffy and maybe not peckish. Peck I've been peckerish. by a baby penguin before. They were peckish. Oh. <laughs> My. He's like, I have had this experience. I know. <laughs> I believe you. You're the first person I've had first person experience with that has been, in fact, pecked by a baby penguin. Pecked by a baby penguin. Although it doesn't come up in conversation very much. That is true. <laughs> And last but not least, have you had fun on the show this evening? Absolutely. This has been great. Yay! <laughs> I mean, that's it. You made it. She survived. The whole thing. Yay! <laughs> See, I, I would survive longer than everyone in Zombie Apocalypse, because I'm sure this oh, is sure. exactly what it was like. <laughs> oh, 100%. Practical, You're totally really. fine now. Yeah. You can put that on your resume. Uh, so that's the end. Um, would you take some time, tell folks where to find you, what you're doing, and why you're awesome? Uh, sure, thanks. I'm not very good at the why I'm awesome bit, but uh, as for the where to find yeah, you... Yeah, you already did that. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter under T Crusading, but I'm also one half of Cobblepath Games, um, and you can find us on Twitter at Cobblepath. Um, we have a website, which is www.cobblepathgames.co.uk, um, I have a portfolio website which you can find on my Twitter. Um, unless you're planning on hiring me for stuff, you probably don't care about that one. Um, hiring for stuff. Sorry? Yeah, hire me for things. That's a hiring, yeah. And, and work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I am a tabletop RPG writer, designer, etc. I, I did game design teaching for five years. I quit that and then a pandemic happened. Um, so in the midst of realizing I wasn't going to get another job, I sort of doubled down on the game design thing. Uh, so Cobblepath released Locus, which is our flagship title, earlier this year. It's available on Itch at the moment and on drive-thru. Pick your preference. It's slightly cheaper on Itch because of exchange rates. Um, the, it's a horror game. Uh, it's psychological horror based on the kind of horror films that we like and the kind of horror that we thought there was a bit of a gap. Mm -hmm. in larger scale TTRPGs for, um, so it's to not do it any justice, it's kind of Silent hill -y. Um It wasn't built to be the Silent Hill game, it wasn't built to be Silent Hill, um, but Silent Hill was a influence on it and it's fairly Silent Hill-y. Um, so if you like Silent Hill, you'll probably really like it. Um, in my spare time, I make other stuff. I I currently make a free Zelda fan RPG that you can go yeah. 
Um, so if you like Legend of Zelda, go have a look at that. It's like there, there's a few free Zelda TTRPGs out there. Um, my one's a lot crunchier than the others, meaning it's got a lot more rules. Um, most of them are quite rules-like approaches, which if that's your preference, go for those. But if you like D&D and you like like, um, it's not a D&D, it, it's not a D&D game, but it, if you like the sort of like general D&D kind of like play style of like a party, fairly combat heavy, dungeon crawly, different builds, lots of different characters, different, there, there aren't different classes, but there's different tribes where you can play like as Gorons or Zoras and whatever. Um, and lots of different skill trees and stuff to play with. So if you like that sort of building characters and having different people do different skills and stuff, it's aimed at that kind of game. Um, You've it's, it's made the Steven very excited. I literally have it open right now. I'm reading it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, otherwise, like, that's that's my thing. I'm, I'm primarily a game designer, but I also do art and graphics and um, layout and things. Uh, and I'm also... At the moment, I will plug one thing that you can hire me for because people might want to hire me for it. Um, I do game design consultancy. So if you're new in tabletop RPG design or you're like branching out from doing like supplements for a pre-existing system and you're not sure how to write your own thing or you, you just want another person to kind of like bounce off who's got like a lot of experience with it, um, you can hire me for that. I'm aiming to be pretty cheap because I'm aiming at like people who are getting into the space rather than super established people. Um, first hour's free, and if you're doing it as part of Kickstarter, we can figure out payment as part of the Kickstarter funds and stuff rather than upfront. Um, Ooh. Yeah, like, it's like an hourly consultancy thing where you can like tell me what you're planning on, what your goals are, and we will hash out some ideas and I will like critique what you're planning on doing and help you develop your game. Hopefully, um, if people are in that, doing that, hit me up, like send me a DM on Twitter or something. Um, Do it. Yeah, there's a lot of folks kind of making one shots and doing some various things around the indie. Yeah, like the the indie. The, the indie me back. Don't worry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh no, <laughs> did I do that? Um, yeah, the, the indie PPR yeah. big space is like super vibrant and there's lots of people in it. It's a really good place to sort of like build your sort of expertise um and twitter's got a generally really good uh kind of like what's the word community that's the word mm -hmm. for tabletop rpgs and indies in particular so yeah all right all right well sorry it disappeared on you guys there um so you can <laughs> check out all of jack's links that he's mentioned below uh mick sherry has posted them in our chat so go check it out hire him for consulting check out the locust game check out the horror and the amazingness um and thank you really so much for being on the show we had a great time well, having you on for having me on it's been great we enjoyed it yeah. Uh, so we are gonna go. Oh, I was ahead, saying, what? thanks what? for being up in the middle of the night for us. Isn't it the middle of the night there right now? Yeah, it's like two <laughs> o'clock in the morning. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> no big thing. Uh, but we will be back here shortly after the break. We're gonna come back with Zeal Daddy Scott. Well, hello. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> so we have on the show Zeal Zaddy. Uh, who is is going to be an amazing, fun time to hang out with. So without any ado at all, let's welcome Scott to the show. Yay! Oh. <laughs> I think just super <laughs> Kermit there. Uh, Thank you. I'm excited to be on We're your so show. We're so excited you're here. Yes. Um, I, I did Gamer Mom Luna's the other day. I feel like I'm hitting the network, the yes. circuit. Isn't that what it's called, the circuit? Like when you're yeah. competing or something? Yeah, around. <laughs> that's kind of so, yeah. Uh, Gamer Mom Luna show has been going on for uh, quite a while, and she gets in there with like all the great technical questions and everything more relative and relevant to our community. We just go off the rails and ask you random questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You are chaos. We right. are chaos. Yeah, exactly. You got it. <laughs> Law and order, you're chaos. I love yeah, that. Which, you need both. It's right. It's a good compliment. And then by the between the two shows, like you really get to know a person. <laughs> good chunk. So, yeah. Did you find a die? Or was um, some die to know, yeah. We're using his. So I am gonna use my D thirty. 
And if it's a 21 to 30, I'm asking you a question. Oh, Ooh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> ideal, I ideal. I have two questions lined up just in case. Yes, let's go. Do this. <laughs> let's go. All right. Um, well, go get us your first roll. All right. Let's hope for a 21 up. <laughs> Uh, an 11. Oh. Um, I'll go you ahead and start. If, if you... Well, that, that shouldn't be too hard. If you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you choose and why? A bee one? Oh, yep. I would probably go with uh, a cheetah. Mm. Like, I love speed and... When I was young, I ran track and I liked fast cars. I lost my life with the speeding and when I was a teenager and like fast, fast, fast. I could go with the Peregrine Falcon too. That'd be even faster, but flying. Oh, actually, man, I that mean, would be better. Yeah, then you're hitting like two. Surprises. One of those two. Fair enough. Yeah. Maybe a yeah, hybrid would... cheetah falcon, like chimera. A bird. flying a flying cheetah. Yeah. I'm totally in on that. I mean, why not? A chimera <laughs> than a griffin. <laughs> <laughs> right? Apparently we were having some visual lag, so something might go. That's a big ghost. There, there we go. <laughs> so, okay. so, oh, that's how that works. All right, I, I think that's better. Let's go ahead and roll the next one. Twenty. Not uh, twenty. Hey. So, it's a critical role. It's guest's choice. So you can either have the host roll or roll um, and answer a question instead of yourself, or you can tell us about your favorite story involving yourself. So I'd say if you have a prepared list, you can just pick from there, right? Yeah, I am going to. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Here's interesting. The other day you asked somebody, would you get rid of your pet for a million dollars? Would you shut down your stream for a million dollars? Oh. Like in the middle of the show with no. guests? No, I mean, give it up and stop doing it. <gasps> oh, shit. Like getting rid of your pet. I mean, this is your pet. It's your it's your baby. That's true. It's a million dollars sitting on it, riding on it. Would I still get to... Yeah. What if I got to play with... Would I still get to hang out? Like, could I do the same thing? Could we do the same thing, but without, like, streaming it? Like, just hang out with it? I guess that would be silly with I'll answer show. like you. However you want, it's your question. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Oh, I see, I see. Um, oh. I'm going to say yes, because my cryptocurrency is going to get me a million dollars anyway. <laughs> ah. I, I don't think I would. Between Roll Charisma and playing our... Um, our you know our live play uh, TTRPG games like I have so much fun hanging out with people and mm -hmm. meeting people and friends that it brings me so much joy. I mean a million dollars is a lot of money, so I don't know like don't Ooh. hold me to this. If someone like threw a hundred like a million dollars at me, but I don't I wouldn't want to. The thought yeah. of it makes me sad. honestly. I met some of the coolest people I've ever known in my life digitally here, and I didn't even realize that was possible until starting this journey and. Yeah. So it's kind of like, would you sell your friends? And that's just not something I've ever done, you know? Oh, so I'm gonna there's, have to some old friends I'd sell. Or... <laughs> there's some old friends I'd sell. <laughs> what about you? I mean... Some old friends? Yeah, I mean, there's some I wouldn't mind selling down true. there, you know? It's fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's some. <laughs> this is, you're, tri yeah. you're a trick Here we guy. go, flipping the script. <laughs> All right, let's roll again. I'm scared. Roll it. Five. Back oh. On the uh, what fictional? F oh wait, that's you, Shannon. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's fine. Uh, what fictional family would you be a member of, and why? Oh, fictional family. Oh. No. Do you remember Lost in Space? Like they did a reboot really? of it on Netflix. That would be cool. I'd be that'd be a cool family. That would be Going space. lost in space everywhere, finding new planets, nearly dying, but not quite. Not, awesome. not quite part. That's the important part. That not <laughs> yeah, quite not quite. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, on the, I'm not looking for the death part. Right, exactly. Danger <laughs> Will Robinson, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. right. Let's go ahead and do, um, let's do a couple. We'll do a couple more icebreakers and then we'll hit the, the round. This is fun. Okay. All right. Okay. 11. Didn't we roll an 11? Mm, yes. We One did. Fire again. All right. So I'll roll again. 22. Uh oh. All right. Would you rather be visited by a ghost of your past, present, or future? Future. Hmm. I'd say the future because I feel like I could um, actually get beneficial information from that one. Exactly. However, if we're talking like, you know, Dickens, like a Christmas Carol, past, exactly present, like future. That. Okay, like, I don't know, <laughs> it would be really, really, really cool to be able to, like, go back and without in, like, without interacting with my past, just, like, see things, because there's always those things where it's like, did I perceive that correctly? Did that really yeah, happen? Yeah. Is that my imagination? Did we have that conversation? Like, I'm arguing with my husband, and I'm like, hold on just a second, I'll tell you what I said during that, you know, poof back real quick, and then, you know, so, really? maybe past... <laughs> Nice. That's so about everybody who goes future. I like it. One future, one past. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'd be happy All with right. future, but I just want to know. Yeah. What if I screw yeah, it up? I'm with you. Yeah. I want to go future. <laughs> and look, go forward. And you look and you look forward and it's like this perfect, amazing future. But now because you've looked at it, fundamentally now you probably will change it because you have some predetermined knowledge. And then that awesome yeah. future that you thought was gonna happen doesn't happen. Yep. I mean, yeah. Or you could be dead in the future. Yeah. Yeah, you're just not there. Like, that would be like, I could show oh. you how you die. <laughs> That's like the classic question. Would you like to know how and when you die? Oh, mm, that's a hard one. I kind of do. I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how much time I have left, you guys. <laughs> when, but not I now. Know too. <laughs> I how would make me so paranoid? I know. They'd be like, you're going to choke. Like, well, I'm never eating again for that whole week. Right. Cool. Liquid <laughs> diet. Cool. Well, you can still asphyxiate on liquid <laughs> food. Well, shit. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll. That's a great question. 17. 17. If you could have any real life animal for a pet, what would it be? And why? Yeah, I always like 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 the ugly animals, <laughs> like the star-nosed mole and the opossum, and yes. like, I think they're so interesting and nobody likes them. I think they're oh, super cool. cute. Yeah, they are. I mean, moles aren't, but I mean, no. moles are cool too. Like they live in. I mean, they're cool. Look yeah. like a little mole. They're very. I think they're gentle. I don't really know. I think they're gentle. They're not aggressive. I don't think so. I mean, hedgehogs. Though, that's kind of like a mole that's cute and not. Yeah. Know, not a, well, they're diggers. Yeah, and I happen to agree with you. I think mol moles are very cute. They have like the weird, like nose, and then they have like the yeah. weird padded claw feet, and they're super yeah. adorable. And they kind of like little eyes that are obviously not really functioning. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Um, let's go ahead and pop on over to the lightning round, which as you know, should theoretically be quick, but might not be. So, right. um, I'll go ahead and start. Name one of the seven dwarves. Uh, Dopey. Would you want to live forever? Yes. Favorite like not even any question. I would totally. What? Favorite? With... with so well actually well so would you want to with just knowing that you would literally live forever until the end of you know the universe or would you want to be able to yeah, like that's have an out forever i'm talking about all right oh if there's an okay. out oh well, would it... could like could i like commit suicide to get out of it if i really like was just done yeah i mean yeah you know like where you can just go okay i've lived 1500 years and people I, suck and i'm over it i kind of like the wolverine kind where even if you like stab yourself you just heal i i don't want to be mm -hmm. killed by anybody either yeah yeah although you know one thing i would i think you have to have a caveat to that is you got to make sure that you don't turn into an asshole when you know you can't be killed right like, <laughs> you could totally be an asshole and nobody could do anything to you about it it's so true unless it's something like it's true in concrete and you're stuck in that forever 
I mean, oh, that would be awful. horrible. It yeah. would be. They're still like, yeah. That's the DM in like, talking. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I mean, like, if you're like in some construction area and you're walking, and then somebody just accidentally encases you in a wall, and then you're part of like the Sears Tower for right. however long that building. Now I'm you just know, interview with the vampire vibes. Having quite the day. <laughs> they yeah. bury Louie in the wall. It's easy yeah, mobile. Just Hang like up with the wall. <laughs> It's probably where I thought of it. It was just subconscious. Um, All right. Uh, favorite beverage? Yes. I think that was yeah. Um, I mean, if it's non-alcoholic, I would say I really like Arizona iced tea, the peach one. Oh yes. I love peach anything. So, just peachy is that the one? The, uh, the, or that's peach tea. Peach tea peach, makes it just peach peachy. one with the peach flavor. Like I love mm-hmm. peach flavor stuff. I like that. That I drink that all day. It, Liquor. I mean, I like mixed drinks and beer too. Oh, I'm not a picky guy. Yeah. What is your biggest pet peeve? You know, it, it does drive me crazy when people have good ideas and big ideas, and they do nothing with them. It drives me crazy when people are too lazy or too unmotivated, even with their things that they love. To, you know. I don't know, I'm, I'm excited by my life all the time. Like I always am trying to do stuff or learn stuff. I can't figure out how somebody can be just interested in doing stuff and learning stuff and growing and becoming um, a more yeah. interesting, more knowledgeable person. And it drives me crazy. Like if I work with people that are like that and there's a lot of them out there, they, mm-hmm. it, it's just, it's so annoying. I, they, those people annoy me. <laughs> I totally get yeah. it. It's like, what's the point? If, if you've already, if you're done learning, if you're done, like, being excited about experiencing things, like, what are you yeah. living for? Yeah, exactly. Like, that, you know, honest question. Like, what, like really why do you get up in the morning then? Right. right. It's hard enough for me to get out of bed in the morning, and I, I love learning about a lot of things in life in general, and it's hard to get out of bed. I can't imagine, like, saying, oh, I'm just in the world anymore. You interview people every day you learn things new. That's I cool. love it. It's one of the reasons we wanted to do this. I yeah. yeah. It, Stephen and I are both total nerds and love learning about all of the things that we can. We spent a lot of time hanging out in high school watching Cosmos and <laughs> you know Cosmos. like yeah. I love Cosmos. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There was this, there was one like Cosmos called Connections, and the reason I know about it is I'm doing research for my Tales from the Loop and. Connections was like this 80s show, kind of like Cosmos. It was about the connections of inventors and invention, how they interconnect throughout time. And cool. that show was so interesting. And I'm like, this show should be as famous as Cosmos, but it's 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 just not. I think the 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 person who did the show, um, I forgot his name off the top of my head, was a little more down to earth. And and Carl Sagan just so big and grand. Yeah, oh, and he's just happy. Like, he's, he's, he's like so a horrible. god. It's like listening to a god talk to you about the the universe. Seriously, absolutely. Oh, but yeah. with like that bright-eyed, adorable, yeah. like keen interest. It's, like Carl yeah. Sagan was. So- His speech Ugh. of the pale blue dot makes me tear up mm-hmm. still every time to this came. day. Yeah. Yes. Astounding. <laughs> yes. Oh. Rest wow, Carl I know Sagan, what kind of you are, and I like it. I like you more. <laughs> Same. Back at you. Uh, where the hell were we, though? Oh, pet peeve. How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? I drink zero cups of coffee. I, cup. I can't drink coffee. It makes me nauseous, the bitterness of it. I can't take it. Occasionally, I mean, I live in Miami. I will occasionally, if I'm in, like, work with people that have, like, Cuban coffee come around, that it comes in these little tiny cups, and it's super sweet and super strong. But the sweet cancels out the bitterness that's okay but if i have to just drink straight coffee or no do you have do you caffeinate uh so is it tea that you go for when yeah, yeah i like teas okay yeah that's crazy. i love caffeine we yeah, all love i caffeine. was wondering <laughs> yeah it's like uh, that's the question like if you don't drink coffee how do you caffeinate and everyone has basically had yeah. some form of caffeination so it's the greatest drug ever invented uh-huh hallelujah so um, true uh, 
If you had a band, what would the name be? All right, this may come out, this may sound X-rated. Can I say it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You have a much more rating of the issue. Okay. So, Rabbit Vibe. <laughs> rabbit Vibe. <laughs> I like it. You're just talking about cute and fluffy bunnies. That's the vibe, oh, right? There's nothing else associated with bunnies. <laughs> yes. Who doesn't like good vibes? I mean, come on. All the buns. All the day. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> who doesn't like the book? Uh, what's your favorite carnival food? I've only had it once. The what's it called? Cheese curd curds. Yum. Oh yes. yes. Like they do in the Midwest, like from you know Wisconsin and stuff. Yes. That yes. is like so good. So toxic candy. Fried squeaky cheese. We come from the land of Tillamook Cheese Factory, Shannon and I. It's true. Mm, I've been there countless times, cool. and I always have to have my squeaky cheese. Mm. I don't know if everyone's yeah. heard of Tillamook cheese, Stephen. Oh, yeah. Well, it's in Arizona, I so I just assume. Went, oh, okay, good. I think it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a foodie. Yeah, I, I mean, for Oregon. Oregon. Yes. All right. You're a worldly guy. You know the Oregon That's cheese right. factory. That's right. <laughs> I've been to or I, I've been I've been uh, to Oregon. I've been to. The, to Wisconsin and had cheese there. That was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I have had Wisconsin cheese. Uh, a friend of mine who I trained with at a call center a million years ago was from um, was from Wisconsin, and her she was a young lady, and her mom sent her over like a care package of Wisconsin cheese curds, and uh, it was pretty damn good. Still oh, squeaky. Oh. You gotta have when you eat cheese curds. So you worked in a call center. Did that prepare you for this job, or were you already talking it's been outgoing? I have been the running joke in my family is that I popped out of the womb saying like, "Hello, good morning, mother. How are you today? Yeah. I am loquacious." Like okay. it's a uh, yeah. When we were in high school, I'd be like, "This is my best friend, Shannon." She goes, "Shannon and on and on and on." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. I got a lot of things to say. Mostly, I try to focus it on asking other people questions so I'm not as irritating. <laughs> that may have been where that just came from. So, <laughs> Here comes um, the question. Yeah. Would you eat a day-old taquito from 7-Eleven? Hell no. No. Oh. I mean, I'll eat bad food, but I'm not a 7-Eleven taquito eater. Or a hot dog for 7-Eleven eater. Or... Like one of those hamburgers in a plastic bag that you heat up in a microwave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'd rather stop at a Taco Bell, to be honest, than eat that. Mm -hmm. And that's not yeah. even good. And that's not good. It's just like the step up. <laughs> yeah. Taco Bell's my weakness, though, as far as fast food goes. <laughs> I know. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's not even meat, but it's like, yeah, I know this isn't mostly I, not food, but. Like, this is going to be diarrhea and heartburn. We all talk bad about fast food, and yet we all can't stop going. Exactly. Through. They've got us <laughs> down them. <laughs> they do. I think we secretly like it subconsciously or something. Like uh -huh. our brain is like, the conscious eye is like, oh, that's terrible. We can't eat that. And the software is like, yeah, we can't eat. Maybe right now, this time. Yeah. You know, maybe we, we can't eat this. Time. It's bad as you're eating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. it's Mm hmm absolutely well and it's so i don't know it's i think it, i think it takes some place in comfort food you know like fuck it i'm just gonna eat fast food right. and then you yeah, feel a little totally. you feel a little bad you know it's like i'm going to get a this. beefy five layer burrito right now <laughs> yeah or a white castle mm. Mm. you don't have white castles around where i live like i've never we don't been have them here either, either. okay so I, I, where I, I grew up here. in st louis so yeah, when you come visit, there. we'll go all right. All right. I've watched Harold and Kumar oh. go uh -huh. to White House. Yeah. But that's about... That's Hopefully about it won't be so trip. hard for us to get there. That would be good, because that was quite the trip. <laughs> Although I've always wanted to meet Neil Patrick Harris, so, you know, it, whether, yeah. you know, he might be jugged out and crazed, but it's fine. Oh, now I want, I've, I've had White Castle burgers frozen, so they come in, like, the packages you can get in the freezer section that you stick not in the same. oven. I'm guessing not, not the same. Yeah. Not the same. Yeah. yeah. I realized it when I ate it. I'm like, yeah. eh, this is all right. So, oh, yeah, gotta be pretty good. Um, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Mm, it, it depends on what's in it. Like, 
I don't think I, I don't really like dark chocolate just by itself, but I do love dark chocolate with like almonds in it or something where there's nuts in it. I love dark chocolate with nuts, but if it's not got nuts, then I like milk chocolate. Fair. That's fair. So quick, say something cool. Symmetry is overrated. What is overrated? Symmetry. I think symmetry? symmetry is boring. Symmetry. When you look at like uh, when you look at cool buildings and stuff that aren't symmetrical, those are the ones you remember. Nobody true. cares about the building looks like what? a cube. It's the same. Is it like thing. Dubai or there's yeah, somewhere Dubai. that recently started huh? Yeah. Is it Dubai with all their cool the wavy cool giant buildings? Yeah, and stuff? Oh my god, those things are amazing. Yeah. All about it. Giant fans in the middle of them that, that yeah. help them. I want to go to Dubai. I've been to Dubai in my Oculus headset. That's the only time I've been to Dubai. Yeah. I've gone to Paris, France in Las Vegas. No different, yeah. right? Oh. Same. I was just there. <laughs> yeah. You guys have seen the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty if you've yeah. been to Vegas. Right? In one shot. Boom, boom. <laughs> yes, totally. You're very worldly after leaving Las Vegas. That's it. Man, that's what I need to do. I haven't been anywhere. I'll just go to Vegas and like get the like obligatory pictures. I've been to Paris. I've been to the Luxor. <laughs> you gotta get the shot of the Bellagio water fountain. Yeah. So, oh, make yeah. a video of that. Yeah. <laughs> but you can only paste that, post that kind of stuff to Facebook, not Instagram or, or, or Twitter. Right. Because that's like that for old people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm primarily on Facebook, so I guess I'm an old lady at heart. Yeah, I just same. I got all sucked up in it and stuck with it. And now I'm trying to be good and do like Twitter and Instagram because that's what the cool kids are doing and we're trying to, you know, build a presence online. It's well, we all have Facebook because that's where our parents are. We have to exactly. share with our parents. It just that's not where we hang out with our yeah. friends. TikTok, that's true. We should TikTok. TikTok. I don't even know how to TikTok. Like, I end up getting like sucked down the rabbit hole of TikTok, and I'm like, what is even happening? Confession. So what's, I what's have, your snap? <laughs> I have four TikTok videos, uh, video ideas on a list that I need to make, and everyone keeps telling me to do them, but I don't do it. I should do it. Do them by the end of so this now, weekend. Okay. I'll you know give you a demo. Or you're going to be part, don't be part of Scott's pet peeve. Uh, right. Get it. Oh, no. <laughs> don't you just got talk it. about it. Hold on, I'm literally making a post-it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so um, Oh yeah, it's you. It's me. Um <laughs> how would you rate your karaoke skills on a scale of one to Mariah Carey? I'd say mine are like Billy Joel bad. Like I can it's more le it's less singing and more like talking through a bad song than singing you don't want to hear me sing so you I'm could opera no. <laughs> i've always so sung, like i sing the around the house i'm yeah. a terrible singer but i love music so i sing anyway and i can care less if anyone likes it around my own house and my kids don't like it around my own house my wife doesn't like it my mother-in-law doesn't <laughs> like it but you know what they all start singing too so. that's the best go. thing too yeah so you go to karaoke, you could poorly sing Piano Man. That's kind of what... Yeah, something like I that. Think. Or uh, Pressure. Pressure's probably the one I can do best because it's really talky. That's... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, using an Elmo voice, tell us how you like your tea. Elmo likes the tea with peach. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's not about the quality. It's about that you just it's jumped like right addiction. into it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you ever went on the scene, you'd be like, Elmo, you're a little pitchy. <laughs> He's very pitchy. Very pitchy. Yeah, very, very pitchy. Uh, who is your favorite Harry Potter character? Uh, I think Hermione Granger changed the world for a lot of girls. And I have three daughters. I'm totally a Hermione Granger, Emma Watson fan. She's brilliant. It, she's a smart person outside of acting. Yes. Um, although I will say, I don't love all her movies. I think she's made a lot of stinkers too. <laughs> That's but true too. She was, she was a, she's always good in a bad movie. I think she's got a problem picking scripts sometimes. But in the Harry Potter movies, she was 
amazing. Yeah. He replaced for me, like you always ask about Disney princesses. That to me has replaced the Disney princess for where we should go. Like, yes. You know. I agree. She has I women her. that that's, that are smart, smarter than all the boys. Strong, fast, self confident, make their own choices, punch really? them in the face occasionally, which that was great. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Super Mario Brothers or Legend of Zelda? Zelda. Yeah. I'm going with swords and stuff. Although, really, I'd rather play Portal 2. Yes! You know. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Or, I, love I love Portal. Portal. I love or, GLaDOS. It's my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> and no one will, will like this one, but I love SimCity Skylines and stuff like that. Like all the builder games. Oh, yeah. I play SimCity they Skylines. They devour my hours. Yes. <laughs> I've been obsessed with SimCity since the original. Like, love them. Yeah. Give it to me and I will play it. <laughs> yeah. It actually, I ended up being a municipal uh, employee. Uh, and uh, I think it, The Sims really helped, uh, you know, like SimCity right. rather than Sims. But yeah, like, you know, I, I, I could differentiate between residential, commercials, and industrial zones. You know, right. I could, uh, you know, I understood taxes and levying taxes wow. and taking out loans and all sorts of stuff. That's Who knew? Who knew? Right? <laughs> it's applicable, kids. Don't let your parents tell you True not that. to play video games. You'll learn shit, I promise. And then when you get bored, you can just cheat and destroy everything with natural disasters like I never did. I did all the time. Uh -huh. All the time. It's like, oh, this tornado is just going to miraculously run into this nuclear power plant that I just happened to put in <laughs> yeah. the middle of town. And they'll be like, oh, no! <laughs> it's a metropolis! Here comes the aliens! <laughs> right. Run! <laughs> <laughs> they're not peaceful aliens, though. I think that's a negative stereotype on aliens. I was, you know, like you have Spock come down and say, "Hey, you want to be part of the Federation of Planets?" No, it's all about destroying. Oh, here's the question, Shannon. Hmm. Uh, well, so what's your opinion on would you trade your pet for a million dollars? I saw your yeah. dog. Yes. Oh, I, I have to look around out and make sure none of my kids are five for around. <laughs> yes. A million for one of my dogs? I'll go get another dog. <laughs> It'll be fine. I mean, clearly they'll be taken care of if this person wants them so bad that they're willing yep, to give you a million totally. dollars, right? Yeah. Absolutely. True. That's true. Yeah. Uh, have you ever wanted to try LARPing or have you LARPed? I have LARPed. I've done Vampire a long time ago. And every now and then I get together with my sister and we do like those family uh, mystery, murder mystery things. Yes. You know, I mean, that's what you do with your family because like they're not really into things enough. Right, but right. Kind of like, like light LARPing. I like, used to do that every week on the train. We're good. Yeah. That's true. I yeah. helped once or twice. Yeah. Um, uh, what was your favorite? Right. Oh, is doing Rocky Horror LARPing? Because I used to do Rocky Horror on stage. Like, yes. You know, in the awesome. movie theater here. Hey, and I would throw was some toast and rice at you anytime. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And that I is kind of, that's, that's like early LARPing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy, you know, so Rocky great. Horror really pioneered in a lot of ways that they're unexpected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, What was your favorite childhood toy? Boy, oh. Um, okay, this one is going to sound so stupid. Toilet paper. <laughs> when I was like four years old, I would take this long roll of toilet paper, like the longest thing, and stuff it in the back of my 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 underwear, and run through the house, and the stuff would stream like a cape or a tail. Yes. Oh my god, I would do that all the time. And it would, I'm by sure the time I was done, the house looked like it was teepeed on the inside. <laughs> I can just see pure joy in that, though. You know, that like I used totally... to put like a towel or a blanket around me and run so that like my it would be like a cape and oh, it would same. be flapping. Yep, my grandma but would get yeah, a bamboo like... shoot and make a freaking tinfoil ball on the top of it and pin a freaking yeah. towel to I'm my shirt. Get, like a cat, you know, I'd be good with a stick, a box, toilet paper, <laughs> like anything super simple. I could I do feel that. Yay for being born before the internet, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is good why other people. 100%. Yes. 
Okay, one, I get, I love you guys and thank you and still Steven, but let's not discount the childhoods of others being bad. I still like mud pies gentlemen. and being outside, Shannon. <laughs> so, my children like mud pies and being outside. I have two kids. That's because you have did you it ever right, jumped Shannon. On a, have you ever jumped a ramp on your bike? Yes. I have. <laughs> I have, I also, one time, so I'm a, con we're, we're very country, Stephen and I, uh, oh, and uh, okay. when I was a kid, I was riding on the back of my brother's 50cc motorcycle, and we were running oh, in nice. the, right, it was a little Honda, and we were uh, going through this little trail that we had made in our horse pasture, and my brother went under a different part of the trail and clotheslined me on a juniper branch, and I, like, flew backwards off of the thing, um, I, I yeah, I've, I've, I've jumped lots of stuff. Uh, you've had your, you've had your bruises. I've hurt myself. That's right. Bruises. I've had my bruises. I've got my scars. Bruises are you built. <laughs> That's true. Are you scared of the dark? Occasionally. <laughs> like if I wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> and I don't know where I am, like I had a weird dream or something. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Every now and then. Yeah. Uh, well, with an occasional, yeah. I think it's kind of inherently built That's into us, right. honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Especially if I'm in a hotel and I wake up and I don't realize I'm in a hotel. It's, that's like, what? Yeah, where like, am I? Where I'm supposed to be. I'm bumping stuff, like head to the bathroom or something. It's jarring. <laughs> oh, yeah, when you wake up in that kind of like half awake, not really yeah. awake thing and you're kind of bouncing off the walls and stuff. Whoa. And then they're, yeah. Yeah. Me too, and it sucks when you're in a place that's not home. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is your biggest celebrity crush? Well, one of them was just Emma Watson, of course. I yeah. love Natalie Portman. Yeah. I think she's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, here's another one that I think is really cool. I mean, she's older now, but like, I think Tilda Swinton is just astounding as an actor and a person and like ah she's great like great she's great. fascinating mm -hmm. i completely agree yeah. I, love I, saw, I saw a picture of her <laughs> recently uh, yes uh, i just saw a picture of me, um with her and david bowie standing next to each other yeah. in the same picture and it was striking i'm like they could totally be androgynous yeah. siblings you know totally. like, <laughs> i love that that's super cool. Yeah, totally. I love her. Well, she plays so many different things. I love her too. as Michael, the Archangel. Was that Constantine? She wasn't Michael. She was Gabriel. Gabriel. No. Yeah. Yeah, Gabriel. I think it was Gabriel. The Archangel. Yeah, yeah. She was so cool. Oh my gosh. There, That's the best way to do an angel. And she was in Dead Don't Die, which was a fantastic uh, zombie movie recently that came out that I couldn't tell you why I loved it, but I loved it so much. It's yeah. got Bill Did she have a role in um, what they do in the shadows. Did she, wasn't she like the, yes. head of the vampire council? She was. Yes. She was. Yeah. That was, great. That was fun that because it had like everyone. It had like Blake, yeah. like Wesley Snipes was there. Yeah. It had like like it's everyone. Awesome. It just kept going. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm that was That was so, an amazing show. The movie and the and the TV show both amazing. Good Absolutely. times. Absolutely. Watch them. Did you have fun on the show? I had so much fun. You guys are amazing. And like, I was so excited to come and see you guys and get on here and lot, although he's been super quiet and trying to avoid it. Yeah. Trying to be all producery and stuff. And he's got super but, fresh. Yeah. I watched some of your shows to kind of prep and I was like, oh my God, they're so, so cool. They ask, they're funny. You guys are funny, by the way. Oh, thank you. And, oh. and I love your <laughs> Steven, I love your hair. I've been thinking about getting some color in my hair. I'm like, oh, he's Do got cool hair. This Do is it. not the color of anybody else I've seen. Yes. Like, everyone's gone pink. And my daughters are like, we'll pick a color. I'm like, okay, pick a color. But it can't be a color any of your friends have. So they're like, we're going to mix a color. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Mix a color for me. Yeah, you got to do it. Good. I will be expecting a photo of that uh, to be posted yeah. on your social media. Mm-hmm. Be watching. Be watching. Uh, <laughs> it'll happen. Speaking of social media, etc., um, if you would be so kind as to tell the lovely audience and everyone where they can find you and what you're up to. You can find
find me at at Zeal Zaddy everywhere. YouTube, uh, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I'm way more active on Twitter than the other two. Uh, Patreon, although I'm very inactive on Patreon at the moment, although I'm preparing some stuff, but it'll be a little while before it starts rolling again. And uh, I mean, obviously not on on Discord, but if you go to my link tree, which is Linktree slash Zeal Daddy. It has a, a link over to my Discord. So everything there. Oh, what I do? So here's the things I'm doing right now. I just ended season one of Mists of Elixir, which is my D&D 5e campaign. My partner in Zeal Daddy, his name is Cliff Dunn, who has not been seen on stream since the pandemic. He's a bit of a Luddite, but he's about to get like awakened to new stuff. He's getting ready to do our steampunk, our our magic steampunk game in the alternate 1800s. And I'm getting ready to run, I'm within a week or two of running my first streams of Tales from the Loop, which I've got like 20 players. So I'm breaking into little groups. I'm going to do them a little bit at a time. And I'm, just, I'm super excited about Tales from the Loop because nobody runs it. I don't see anybody running it. And the game is amazing. It's super easy. And it's all about, like, it's about what I love. I love role playing and character development and characters and you know drama i could care less about picking up a sword i'm all about oh my god you had a baby with his sister <laughs> that's what i love <laughs> in the game <laughs> which oh, actually happened good. by the way in my last game <laughs> oh. i was wondering if that was just yeah that's that good happen. A crazy oh, drama. Drama. Like, that's in spanish <laughs> telenovela <laughs> It is like a novella. It's scandalo. Scandalo. So all of the, uh, the, the projects and information that you mentioned are glorious. McSherry has uh, copied and pasted the links below in chat. So everybody go follow Zeal's Zaddy. Get, get up in that awesomeness and uh, show got some love and we'll then we'll be watching for hair uh are you gonna just do the hair or are you also gonna do the beard because i see like a really good the beard. yeah a little white spot i could hit there i'm like yeah that'd be kind of there you go. That's what I, I was thinking i'm like right there you've got like a blank yeah. canvas it's you know be perfect um but yeah watch thank out for all of that and thank you again so much for coming this has been so fun and having you flip the script around and ask us questions is super cool and unexpected <laughs> that was a lot of fun oh. i can't i'm gonna drop the other questions in the in the i'll drop them in chat oh do it i was gonna drop them in the discord hell no i'm dropping them in chat that's even better <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll answer them Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. yeah all right <laughs> thank you for having yeah. me I, I had so much fun you know, I hope to do it again sometime. I'll come up with new questions. Yeah. Maybe the whole thing I will be flipped, and me and Watt will be on here asking you two the questions. He'll stop producing for a moment. I'm about hey. to. Hey, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I dig it. We'll definitely have you back. Um, and yeah, so I guess that is it for the show. It always goes by so fast, and it's so much fun, and it's super sad. Um, but we will see everybody um, maybe next week. I think next week um, we're in the middle of a move and things are going to get a little hairy, a little dicey, as it were. So um, we'll keep everybody posted. But thank you all for joining us. Uh, check out these delightful gentlemen and everyone have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you for our other shows uh, Thursday, the Dreams of Silver and Stone, Aether and Steamworks, and then also Aether and Steamworks, uh, Clock, no, what is it? Sparrows. Sparrows. <laughs> Almost like uh, the sparrows on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye.